Link from The Legend of Zelda is second only to Mario in terms of Nintendo's most recognizable characters. He represents a widely beloved series of games and has since been featured in other Nintendo variety games. One of the earliest appearances Link made outside of Zelda was in the original Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 64. Link was the first sword character in Smash, and also one of the first projectile characters wielding his classical boomerang and bombs. The adult Ocarina of Time design for Link returned in Melee, as did four more Zelda reps. Zelda herself, Sheik, and Ganondorf joined the roster, but the fourth newcomer was more familiar. Most likely representing Majora's Mask, Young Link was added to Melee. He played with the same moveset as Link, but in a faster, smaller package. Interestingly, Super Smash Bros. Brawl replaced Young Link with Toon Link. As of Brawl's release, the most relevant child Link was the protagonist of Wind Waker, so this made more sense. Adult Link was updated too to his Twilight Princess design. Although filling the child Link position previously held by Young Link, Toon Link played very differently. Even relative to Brawl's physics, he was much floatier than any previous Link design, but most notably, some of his normals were changed. His forward air, neutral air, and back air were all remade, with forward air only hitting once, and nair and back air becoming new sword moves instead of kicks. Toon Link's great projectile game and aerial mobility made him fairly viable as a higher tier character in Brawl. In Smash 4, Toon Link returned fairly unchanged. The game's mechanics gave him lots of combo potential from bombs, and his already great mobility made him a tricky fighter to deal with. He again fell into that region in between mid and high tier, with little representation outside of Japan and Mexico. In Smash Ultimate, Toon Link received a few minor changes but plays more or less exactly as he had in Smash 4. He maintains a strong zoning game with good combo setups, but in Ultimate, he has an even smaller player base. Toon Link is one of the least played characters in the game, and this makes it really hard to find good results for the character. Have you ever played against a Toon Link before? They really are a rare breed. For our question of the day as usual, do you think Toon Link falls into mid-tier or high-tier? He's hovered in this gray area since his debut, so where does he stand now? Make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides to learn more about Toon Link and the entire cast. If you're a Toon Link main looking to study more about the character, you can find detailed tutorials on our website, ProGuides.com. The benefits don't end there. You can chat and play with pros by joining our live classes and even get coaching on demand via our Insta Pro platform. Up your game! Log on to ProGuys.com right now. So what's Toon Link really all about? And how does he differ from his fellow heroes? For starters, Toon Link is fast. In fact, he's the fastest Link on the ground and in the air. It's a common misconception that Young Link is the fastest Link, but Toon Link actually outruns and outdrifts him. He's also still the floatiest Link, but with a small hurtbox and decent aerial mobility, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Toon Link's floatiness and high jumps help him escape danger and give him time to pull out bombs. This mobility on a character with heavy projectile usage results in a Link that's really good at running away, and for a zoner, that's a strong point. Toon Link is very slippery, and can be harder to catch than those pigs on Windfall Island. He's very good at baiting opponents into overcommitting, and has great tools to capitalize. Like Young Link, his bombs are excellent for starting combos at many percents. This is most dangerous at kill percent, where he can confirm into forward air or even an up B to close out stocks. He can also combo out of a boomerang if he doesn't have a bomb in hand, and will usually have the stage covered with projectiles. Toon Link is just as capable as Young Link of zoning out opponents with a barrage of arrows, boomerangs, and bombs, and this already gives him a strong matchup against bigger characters that struggle to break through his obstacle course. He isn't limited to just projectiles, though. For such a small version of the Master Sword, Toon Link's sword attacks actually have a surprisingly good range. Their frame data is decent, too. Back air and nair both come out on frame 6, helping him escape pressure and punish out of shield. His out of shield game is fairly solid in general thanks to his frame 6 up special and frame 11 up smash. Either of these options can be used to close out stocks at appropriate percents. As for his other aerials, Toon Link's forward air and up air are slower, but each compensates in its own way. Fair is quite strong, acting as his go-to confirm from bombs at kill percents as well as securing early kills via edge guards. It's also minus 6 on shield, which is very safe for a long range option. Up air is also very strong, but more notably, it stays out forever with a whopping 30 total active frames. Coupled with Toon Link's floatiness, this up air can be used to apply lots of pressure from beneath, even frame trapping into itself. His down air is… well, it has a win box. That's pretty cool, right?
Um, Toon Link's ground game is quite solid as well. His down tilt is ridiculously safe and creates potential tech chase opportunities. Up tilt is an outstanding anti-air. It combos into itself at lower percents, leaving big bodies and fast fallers helpless. At higher percents, it can combo into aerials, sometimes kill confirming into up air. Also, his dash attack is surprisingly fast at frame 7, providing a decent grounded whiff punish options that the other links don't quite have. But subscribing to Pearl Guides is even faster at frame 1. Toon Link's strengths culminate in a pesky zoner with consistent setups who can run away and evade his opponents with the best. He isn't without weakness though. As a floaty character who runs away a lot, Toon Link will often find himself in the air or in the corner, where he takes a positional disadvantage. He'll have trouble landing against good jugglers as his own down air is a hard commitment, and he can be pressured in the corner if he doesn't have a bomb in hand. Toon Link can also struggle to secure the kill. Not only do his kill confirms all lose to shield, but his gameplay becomes more telegraphed when he's holding a bomb. His back throw does have decent kill power, but his grab is on the slow side as a tether, so it won't be effective as a defensive option near the side blast zone, where back throws are the best. Unlike other common characters, Toon Link's game plan is very well known, as it's similar to Young Link or even Link's. Speaking of his fellow Link's, this may also be a factor in Toon Link's lack of representation. Young Link has been absent since Melee, making him initially more appealing, and his fast-paced combo-heavy gameplay still makes him a pretty popular pick. Regular Link also received a new design as well as an interesting new mechanic in his remote bomb, but Toon Link is still just… Toon Link. It's easy to see why he's been overshadowed. This isn't the case in Japan, however. Japanese Toon Links, Rima, Sigma, and Level 1 have consistently placed in Japan's largest events. Rima's Toon Link has defeated Japan's best player, Zakre, as well as Niatono and Ken. Sigma, currently considered to be the best solo Toon Link in the world, has placed first at two Karasuma events and top 8 at many others, defeating Hikaru, Zaki, and Kamorakuri along the way. Not to be left out, Level 1 has also accumulated some great wins, beating Raito's Duck Hunt, Yumeki's Daisy, and even making a statement by defeating Sigma. These wins are not only impressive to show Toon Link's viability as a tournament character, but also his matchup capability. Most prominently, wins over Zachary's Wolf and Ken's Sonic show that he can compete with some very strong characters in the current meta. This is evident outside of Japan as well. At the Big House 9, Wishes brought out his Toon Link seemingly at random and was able to defeat Puppe's Pokemon Trainer, another top tier character. North America's best Toon Link main, Xcall, was also able to defeat Jen's Palutena in Winner's Side of Dreamhack Montreal 2019. These few but strong results along with obvious strength have established Toon Link's reputation as an underrated character with lots of potential. World number 1 MKLeo places him in high tier on his most recent tier list, as does Samsora, albeit in his low high tier category. It's hard to argue with the top 2 players in the world, but Tweak, Mars, and Esam all place Toon Link in mid tier, reflecting on his uncertain likelihood of doing well in tournaments. Interestingly, even Zach Ray places Toon Link in his 4th highest tier. His tiers are categorized by letters, so it's hard to definitively call this mid-tier, but it's certainly in the middle of the list. Toon Link has a lot of potential, and is a character you never want to sleep on. Still, he lacks more outlandish broken qualities that even most high tiers in Ultimate possess, and his results are too limited to judge much from at the moment. We're calling Toon Link a mid-tier, for now. But you should definitely keep your eye on the Hero of Winds. How do you feel about Toon Link? Drop a comment below and subscribe to the channel to catch the next tier battle and more.